I'm just curious, what has been your craziest or most touching fan moment that you've had with somebody? Actually, there's a great story. Uh, it, it, when I went to Korea, um, it's very popular in Korea, and um, apparently it got out that I was staying at this hotel, uh, and I visited this coffee shop one time. So this one girl drove three hours oh and waited for me all day, hope, hoping that I would show up at that coffee shop, and I didn't. Oh, no. And uh, she was about to go home, and I was like, 1 a.m. and I was walking back to my hotel and she saw me on the street and she's like, I've been waiting here all day for you. <laughs> she gave me this postcard that she wrote and she was so sweet. Um, I took her, I bought her hot chocolate and then uh, uh, she went home. Yeah. That is so awesome. It was awesome, yeah. It was really dedicated, cool fans, yeah. Most celebrities are happy to get fan support and fan promotion, so in return, they'll find themselves being invited to a lot of VIP events to cover them from a fan's point of view, and the celebrities in turn will promote their sites. On SingularityFanPages.com. That you should be, then you're not on SingularityFanPages.com. You should yeah. eventually go there. <laughs> then you would be on SingularityFanPages.com. SingularityFanPages.com. Couldn't have thought of an easier name. All right, make sure to check out fanculture.org. Fanculture.org, you got that? <laughs> Hi, this is Josh Gates from Destination Truth. Check out the Singularity fan pages at www.singularityfanpages.com. While covering the Lady Gaga concert, I also interviewed Danielle, who was the main monster vlogger, about why she became a Gaga fan. I do love her, but it's like in a respect way, because I didn't know anything about her. I never like sought out any, any information. And yet I knew that she like was really hardcore standing for equal rights. And like to know that about someone that you don't really know anything about, I feel like really says a lot about them. And so once I came on and like once I saw the show, like the first time I ever saw the show, I was like, this is it for me. Like she's amazing. I love her. I love everything she stands for. A big place for fellow fans to meet and to get their own websites out there is at fan conventions. What is the mecca of fanaticism in pop culture? Comic Con! San Diego Comic-Con is the mothership of all fan conventions, so while I was there in 2011, I decided to interview Aaron Saggers, who is a pop culture expert. Describe to me what a typical week is for you. What do you do being a pop culture expert? What do I do? Um, uh, it involves watching a lot of movies and TV and playing video games and reading comic books and basically having fun uh, trying to keep up on everything, but also you know, research the significance of this stuff and then uh, I, I do set up interviews and I talk to a lot of people. So how does one become a pop culture expert? Uh, I guess I'm trying to answer that question myself. How did I get here? Um, I really just grew up with this stuff. I, uh, I was always following movies and TV, uh, you know, spending uh, weekends at the movie theaters and stacking up on comic books, and it's something that ne never went away. I mean, other people choose to go into a career that's uh, probably uh, more responsible, that involves like accountants and becoming a lawyer and stuff. And I was like, you know what, I actually want to work with movies and TV and pop culture, so how do we get here? I don't know. I guess I lucked out. Uh, as far as the need uh, to make a person or people fanatics, I guess it's different for everyone. Uh, and it probably it, it varies based on what they're fanatic about. I mean, I don't think that a somebody that's fanatic about stamp collecting is necessarily going to be the same thing as someone that's fanatic about Star Trek or uh, you know Star Wars or Doctor Who. Um, but I think with each pop culture institution, that there's something very special and unique that speaks to that person. Uh, it's, it's something in the makeup of these movies and TV shows that touches a chord with these people that makes them think, yeah, this speaks to me. This is this is almost made for me, and uh, I relate to it so heavily that I kind of want to build a portion of my life around it. Not in a strange or creepy way. I, I don't necessarily think it's a, a bad thing but uh, it's it's like wanting to be around people that get you well in this case it's like wanting to be around a um, movie or show or book or whatever a, a thing that gets you so I guess that's my take on it A permanent and somewhat controversial way to show your fandoms is to get them tattooed on your body. 
Now, in this scene, I really had to get this tattoo because it signified how important doing these fan activities have been for me over the last few years, but it holds other meaning as well. She wrote, Jeanette, I love you. Um, I'm at, at a book signing, so I had it tattooed on my body. It says, Jeanette, I love you. Not, I will always love you. I love you. Explain that tattoo. Is that is it recording now? Yes. Um, the reason I got this tattoo is when I was with Gaga in October in Dublin, I asked what she designed one for me, and I wanted to get it done underneath me scar from my surgery. So she designed quite a few, and I said to Gaga, you can pick which one, and she decided that this one was the best. So when I got it tattooed. And um, you, you have some other Gaga tattoos as well. I have a little monster tattoo. Great. And do you have any other ones, or is... Um, the, well, the a kind, semi-precious weapons. Yeah, they're kind of Gaga related, but like more semi-precious weapons related. And then you have some Gaga tattoos. I have a little monster, the same one he has, yeah. right here. And I have a monster paw. Yeah. This is actually a picture I took of her in her concert, and um, like it was like in 2009, and she did this at the end after Bad Romance, and I took that same picture to the two artists, and I told her to make it look like a monster hand, kind of, and then you just make it look creepy, and that's what I got. Nice. Yeah. And you have another tattoo, don't you? Yeah, but I just got it last night. <laughs> <laughs> tattoo. Oh. You're not flashing me, you're showing me a tattoo. It's on film, right. don't worry. It's okay, don't worry about it. Okay. Right. Don't worry, I'll, I'll edit. I don't need any tidbits on this thing, okay? Alright. Oh my goodness. Oh my god, that's a shame. A few weeks after getting this tattoo, it actually landed Waldo backstage at a Gaga concert. How did you get to meet Gaga after the show in Tampa? Well, you have a tattoo? Let me see it. Waldo is one among many little monsters who have been thrust into the spotlight for their dedicated fandom to her. Lady Gaga, we gave a backstage pass to one very special fan. Let's meet her. So what does it mean to you to get a backstage pass? This is the, what, the biggest thing that's ever happened to me. And, and my mind is still telling me, you know, this is not, you know, you don't deserve this. But Gaga would tell me, you absolutely deserve this. I hope you can come up with some adjectives to describe a remarkable tattoo. Can you tell us about it? Sure. Uh, this tattoo I got about, um, about uh, just about a year ago. The reason that I got it is because, you know, you saw those paws up in the audience. It's the way that we connect her, to her and she connects to us and it's the way we connect to each other. It's a very, you know, emotional connection with just that symbolism. Here's Stephanie over a year later with some added artwork on herself. I uh, got that tattoo because, I, again, I was starting to feel a part, a part of something. And, um, the word monster for a lot of people, or, or just socially, um, brings up certain images. And I think that embracing that word and turning, turning it into something that, that says, you know, I'm a part of something really amazing and really unique with other unique people and like-minded people and, um, you know, almost just, just like an identification uh, and, a, and, a, and an association and a connection. And so I, at that point, I considered myself a monster. I considered myself a part of that, of that movement, that, that fan movement. So that was my first big dog I tattooed. And how many others do you have that you can show on camera? <laughs> I can show them all on camera. I have um, the, the monster, and then I have the two portraits. This is the first portrait. And then this is the second portrait. Uh, and then I have the lyrics, put on your shades, because I'll be dancing in the flames from the edge of glory. And then it just in here, this is her signature. Very cool. Now, for the signature, tell me about that when she signed your arm that you got tattooed. Um, well, when she signed it, it was very, very quick. Uh, um, hours, very, we for 
hours to get into the Best Buy signing. Um, but she looked at me, and she kind of looked down at it and then looked back up at me and, you know, and, and almost kind of a little bit of surprise. And she just, uh, she, she said, yeah, you, I know exactly who you are and you are a rock star. And, <laughs> and that was, um, that was pretty, a pretty in, intense, insane moment. And I really, uh, I tell people all the time when, it, when you meet her, it's one of those things where, where immediately afterwards you, you can't even really figure out whether it was a dream or not. But, um, you know, she had already signed my CD, and, and when I asked her to sign my arm, um, she did, and she was really, you know, really, really nice about it, and really, she, she acted like she was honored that I had done that for her. And uh, so, so, yeah, that was, that was pretty cool to have her do that. And so I immediately pretty much the next afternoon got the, got the signature tattooed over. There are so many other stories that I can show to you, but that's the problem is that there's just no one type of fan. There's no one awesome story. There's no one awesome film or book or any kind of example that I can show to you to show what a fan really is. Now, we all go through a lot, we all do very hectic, crazy things in order to show how much of a big fan that we are, but that's the beauty of it, is that we can find ways to show that the fandoms are not our lives, we're interested in other things, but these are the focal points that bring us together and make us creative and make us whole as people, and I guess that's really the message that matters in the end. Randy Jennings, who runs an Arnold Schwarzenegger site, it seems like he stole a chapter out of my life, but this quote means a lot because I can, you know, I can lend myself to this. Just because we do what we do as fans doesn't mean that we're weird people. Go Amanda! As much as I didn't want it to be, this movie strangely is about me because I wouldn't be where I am today without being a fan. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We used to say we won't get older. It'll be all right. We wait to change and then it's over. But it'll be all right. Oh, yeah, that's okay. It sounds like, kind of like Bill, Bill Cosby. Cosby. <laughs>